Welcome to another video. I have a very easy system of equations from an Olympiad problem, but it is only easy if you know what to do, as all problems are. They are easy if you know what to do, but you can get stuck on this problem for forever. But we know we're not going to get stuck because as we can see, this is secant plus tangent. So when you have a system of equations with trig ratios, you need to know trig identities because that's the basis for most of them. So you start asking, what trig identity do I know that connects secant with tangent? Um, what about secant squared x plus or minus tan squared x equals 1 from the Pythagorean trig identity. And that's the secret to solving this one. It is not hard, but it will be hard if you do not recall what I just said. Let's get into the video. So really, you're not expected to find m and n in order to find m plus n. Problems like this usually would not require that you know what m is or what n is. You just need to know what m plus n is. But sometimes you may need to find m and then find n. So this is not really a system of equations because we have too many unknowns, okay? We don't know x, we don't know m, we don't know n. But with the trig identity I mentioned, we might be able to generate something for secant x plus tan x. So watch this. We know that secant squared x minus tan squared x is equal to 1. This is from the Pythagorean trig identity from sine squared theta equals, I mean, plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That's where this comes from. Just move things around and divide by cosine. You'll find yourself with this expression. Okay, so with this, how does this help us? Well, we know that this is difference of two squares. And with the difference of two squares, we can write this as secant x minus tan x. So we know that this is secant x minus tan x multiplied by secant x plus tan x. And that is equal to one. This we know. So we say recall here. And this is the key to solving this problem, because now they've given me what secant x plus tan x is. It's 22 over 7. So I can say that this is 22 over 7 multiplied by secant x minus tan x. Do you see that? So if I want to get secant x minus tan x, it's going to be, I'm going to divide both sides by 22 over 7. It gives me 7 over 22. So I can clearly say that secant x minus tan x will be equal to 7 over 22. So you go, so how does this help me? Well, now we have a proper system of equations because now we have two unknowns. We don't know secant x. We don't know tan x. And that's all we don't know, but we can rewrite it as secant x minus tan x with a different answer on the right. So you can solve the system of equations. You will either get secant x or tan x. And once you get one trig ratio, you can get every other trig ratio. You can get, once you know what sine is, you can know what cosine is. You know how to do that from your trig class. Yeah, that's what we do. So let's go here and say that secant x plus tan x equals 22 over 7. And we also know that secant x minus tan x equals 7 over 22. So we can eliminate tan by just working with secant. So with secant, we add both together. We get 2 secant x will be the sum of this two, which is going to be 22 over 7 plus 7 over 22. And I know if you add these two together, um, 22 times 22 is 484, 7 times 7 is 49. If you add those together, you're going to end up with 484 plus 49 over, what is 7 times 22? It's going to be 154. So you have 154 equals 2 
secant x. So what is secant x? Secant x is clearly this divided by 2. So if we add these two together, we're going to get 533. So this is 533 divided by, you divide this by 2, it's 308. So we have a trig ratio, and this cannot be reduced. Um, so we're just going to leave it that way, okay? They're relatively prime. That is, I don't have a number that divides 533 that also divides 308. So what do I do next? I need to... That's it. So remember what we're looking for is M plus N. And this is where M and N show up in the problem. So I'm going to go here and say, what is cosecant X? And what is cotangent X? Well, I may not know them from here, but I can find them from here by just drawing my triangle. Watch me. So this is angle X. I know that secant, by definition, is hypotenuse over adjacent, right? The reciprocal of cosine. So this is my hypotenuse, which is 533. The adjacent side is going to be 308. And I have to use Pythagorean theorem to find this one, which is this one squared minus this squared, and that should give me 435. How did I know? Well, I already did it. Okay, so 435. And that's it. And once you have this, you can find cosecant x from the triangle. You can find cotangent x from the triangle. And by the time you add them together, you're going to get a ratio, and that ratio is m over n, and you can add m plus n together. See, this is where I should say, do it yourself, but let me just do it, okay, because I'm a good guy. So, at this point, let's go here. What is cosecant x? So, cosecant x plus cotangent x will be equal to, what is cosecant x from here? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. So it's going to be 533 over 435. So um, I think I want to write it this way. Um, let me put it here. So it should be in the middle. 533 over 435 plus. We get this one. It's cotangent. That's um, adjacent over opposite, which is 308 over 435. 308 over 435. Okay, what does that give us? Well, you see they have a common denominator of 435. That means I'm just going to add these two together. That should give me 841. So this is 841 over 435. Now, is it smart to say that this is M and this is N? No. Remember, a fraction is only defined properly if it is reduced. So you have to think, is there a number that divides this that also divides this? I know this is the square of 29. Okay, so I'm just going to think whether 29 divides this. Otherwise, they're relatively prime. Okay, 29 divides 841 29 times. Because this ends in 5, I'm just going to try 5. Definitely it's not 5, okay, because this is too big for 5. So I try 15, and I suspect this is 15. Okay, so it means when you reduce this expression, you're going to have 29. Divide by 29, divide by 29, you get 15. So this is the proper fraction, fraction we're dealing with. And this implies that your m is 9. I mean, it's 29, rather and n is 15. So this implies m over n, let's write it this way, equals 29 over 15, such that m plus n is 29 plus 15, which is equal to, what's that? 44. I wrote my fours in two different ways. Let's go. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.